I thought I'd sit down and I would start uh, with some of the jigs that I'm going to tie for a fellow who contacted me. A little bit of backstory. After the last collaboration I did with uh, Chris at Retro Bassin, I was contacted by Todd um, from Bassin 101. Really neat channel if you're into bass fishing. He does a little bit of that old school stuff, talks about some of that old school, you know, um, equipment and lures from the 70s, 80s. Um, but he also touches on some modern things. Really knowledgeable. So uh, he contacted me, wanted me to tie up some hair jigs. I'm not 100% sure on exactly what he's looking to do. I'm sure there'll be um, some discussion on use. Um, I'd love to see him fish with them, maybe catch a fish or two, which would be really neat. So I'm breaking this uh, video down maybe into two or three, maybe a three-part series. Um, and today I'm just doing some of the simpler heads. I have this. Let me see. I have this head here, one quarter Arky uh, head from a Hiltz mold. It does take a weed guard, as you can see, um, which I've left that off for now. Um, I cast these on a Mustad 32755. It's a size 4 aught hook. And uh, these heads are a little bit simpler. They don't have that extra piece on the collar. Um, for a trailer, you could you could push a rubber tail or something up over that hump, but mainly it's this is for tying that hair, latching that hair on here in this section, and it'll help it flare a little bit and have that nice profile. So these jigs will be um, I might do a couple two color jigs. These that we're going to do today are going to be a single color and then I would like to um, maybe incorporate some of this uh, new age crinkle flash. It's a really neat color. It's fairly fine. To me it's kind of the same width or diameter of like a crystal flash or an angel hair. But it's a flat tinsel but it's got that crinkle texture and then the color on this is they call it winter run blue to me it's a nice combination of blues purples it's a little bit of green in there as well uh, and maybe uh, a touch of pearl so really neat color if you this side the reflection you can see some of those greens and then if i flip the bag this side seems to be more purpley but a real neat product. I also have some here that is same thing. It's the Crinkle Mirror Flash. This purple one that's the Winter Run Blue is New Age Crinkle Flash. Right. And then this looks very similar though not as crinkly. And it's Crinkle Mirror Flash and this is just the uh, blue color. So very Side by side, you know, when I was, I probably grabbed these because I thought they both looked the same. Um, but this, the crinkle mirror flash has a little bit flatter appearance where it still has that crinkle texture, but it's definitely not the same as this purple. So I think they'll look great. So what I was going to do is I'll start with maybe this black head. We'll do a solid black with uh, using some of the crinkle flash down the lateral uh, lines on each side and uh, I have a brown head and olive head here I'm gonna do a whole bunch of different jigs for them like I mentioned some two color combinations I might have mentioned in a previous video or during my live stream I want to do something more of a crawfishy look I'm trying to do this with an old-school uh, flavor and uh, just use our skills and techniques at times. Let's get started with these. 
So in the vise, I have that one quarter Hiltz mold Arky head. And like I said, we're going to do this with a black. So I just have a plain black bucktail. Length on these are fairly short. Um, it's not a it's not a big big northern bucktail, but a length of these definitely long enough. I'm going to use the New Age Crinkle Flash, right? So since we're going to use that purple, I'm going to use a Pack Bay purple nylon size A. We're just going to lock this on right here, three wraps towards the bend of the hook, right here, and then there's three wraps back to the other side towards the eye of the hook, we can say. And typically this is your pinch that you'll be looking for is a third, a third, and a third the way we tie these on. If you get used to doing these, you really can, if you can do a 50-50 pinch um, because you'll know, you'll get used to the way the hair, when you lash it on and manipulate it the way it, it works. So if you're locking the thread on and it's not 100%, doing it in smaller pinches will allow to adjust for any mistakes as you're going along and, and just correct them as you go. So once my pinch, I get my length that I like before I switch hands, I'm going to loosen the lock on my vise. I'm going to turn it to the 10 o'clock position just so I can see the side and the bottom of this jig. So when this jig is fish, fished, this is the bottom so I can see the side and the bottom. Change my grip one last time. Keep this pinch absolutely tight throughout the whole process. And I can lay it in place. Three loose wraps towards the bend of the hook. And then I pull straight up. Two wraps towards the bend of the hook. Three wraps to the other side of the, the wraps there towards the eye of the hook just to connect that, just to lock it on. Now I can push directly in the center of that pinch towards the center of the hook shank. So I'm not rotating my hand at all, I'm just pushing it straight down. The hairs naturally you can see have already rolled around the collar of this jig here to the six o'clock position and almost to the 12 o'clock just about so that was more like a 50 50 pinch my next pinch will be much smaller um, just so i can show a third a third a third so i'll rotate the the vise the opposite side and again I want to see the top of the jig and the side. Now we'll get a fresh pin pinch. And this was a little bit lower down on that tail where it already removed some of the longest hairs. So I know this is a little bit thinner of a pinch. Just restacking by hand. I want to retain some of that natural look, but do want to remove the longest fibers. It's particularly important if you're tying walleye jigs. Um, I always go by the rule that you get one or two of those long hairs that's just tickling the nose of the walleye and you're feeling a lot of short strikes. Um, so I feel that it's important to just line your tips up to avoid that. But same rule applies in tying a bucktail bass jig. 
So again, I'm just measuring, changing my grip until I can see that these tips are the same. On my table, I have a white cardstock covering on my desk where I can just see the the dark the dark hairs against each other making it easier to measure I switch my grip one last time keep this left hand pinch tight then I can lay this on there's four wraps towards the bend of the hook three wraps back towards the eye of the hook and you can see that there's still a gap here a little bit of a gap on the top so I'm pushing straight down and I'm actually in this case I want to fill in this top side first so I push straight down towards the very center of the hook shank itself in a slight pressure in the direction I want the hairs to roll still have a little bit of a gap on this bottom here and that can be fixed with one last pinch. So once you get comfortable with this, um, placing the hairs on in this way, a 50-50 pinch, you know, you'll lock the hairs on nice and tight, press them in place, maybe roll them side to side and you'll get the hairs going halfway around the hook shank so but this will be a nice full body jig that's the last pinch place it right where you want it that was four or five wraps towards the bend of the hook four or five wraps, or just a couple wraps back to the other side of that collar. And again, I get a pinch all the way around. So we're happy with that. What I do with this is I'll place it on the edge of my table and I use some sort of weight. I just have this old Chinese teacup. I've had it since college <laughs> so I just let the fibers of the flash hang over the edge of the table about four or five inches um, just to help me measure I can eyeball it when I grab I'm gonna grab four strands The exact number of strands isn't, uh, you want to keep it fairly low. You can probably see this is five, five strands. Wet the fibers just like you're going to thread a needle. So you line up all those strands and you can trim the end just to square everything off. My vise is still unlocked so I can roll it forward. And I lay this right at the lateral line. Three wraps towards the bend of the hook, a couple wraps back, and this has a longer piece that I just want to trim. I don't want these to extend past the hairs. I want them to be uh, the same length as the bucktail or just a little bit shorter. I'm going to rotate my vise to the other side. Now it doesn't really matter how many strands you pick. It should be fairly sparse. I'm not trying to put a a giant gob of flash on the sides of these but they should be the same so if there's three on one side put three on the other make sure that there's five here again with the fibers like I was threading a needle just so they line up and I can trim that end flush again place this right down the lateral, lateral line few wraps towards the bend of the hook, a few wraps back towards the head. Again, I just 
trim the longest one there. So now I can go back. I add, I, I do add some pressure with my left hand pinch, mostly just to keep everything together. But now I can walk the wrap of my collar back to the very last wrap closest to the bend of the hook. Just so I know that everything is captured equally and you don't have wraps that, you know, you get the inside wrap kind of sticking out. And then I can walk this back to the head of the jig. And then we will just add wraps to shape this. So I can add a few wraps back towards the center of the collar and then a few wraps back towards the head of the jig. Now on these bass jigs, because of the lead collar that we're tying on top of, these collars do tend to be a little bit bigger than if I was just tying a, a typical bucktail on a, on a bare hook shank. So during the process, you can add, for each of the pinches that we locked on, you can add head cement at that stage or uh, some type of uh, uh, glue do stay away from super glue. I, I believe it tends to, it does soak in really, really well, but I, I believe super glue causes the hair fibers and the thread to be brittle. And if this whole collar is saturated with super glue and you get something that just clamps on it and compresses that collar, I found that they snap. They'll just crack and break and then they come off as one piece glues like a duco cement that have been used for decades uh, by fly tires and guys tying bucktails thin down makes a really nice thread cement for those different layers it's it's flexible similar to if i use just the lacquer based head cement at those stages it dries and it seems fairly tough and durable but lacquer does retain a little bit of flexibility, like plasticity. So, you know, you might get a big fish thrashing on that or even a toothy critter, you know, a pike or something, biting this jig. And those teeth might be evident on that collar, but it's, it's not going to snap and break on you. The collar is going to retain its strength and durability. I stay away from the super glues. I try not to um, preach too much about it uh, because I know it's, it's very popular. I don't want to start an argument. It's just something I don't use. So to finish this off, a loop of a different color, size A thread underneath my last wrap. There's five wraps towards the bend of the hook and just a couple wraps back up towards the head. This, even these four out hooks are really pushing the abilities of this vise. The universal vise is a great vise. I, I abuse the heck out of it. I have put really big hooks in this and forced them in there and made it work for one or two jigs. If I, if I was sitting down to tie a few dozen of these, I really would want a, a dedicated vise. So. But here is, I wish I could hold it better. Here is that Arky jig. To finish this collar, I'm going to put this back in the vise. Regular lacquer based head cement. This is slightly thinned. I actually was using it to do the bodies of uh, some streamer bodies recently. So this is thinned down to soak into the threads and to have a little bit less of that hard candy shell. I'll put it in, let it saturate. Did add, it does overlap onto the hairs a little bit. 
that thin blacker that gets on the uh, bucktail capillary action it will soak in and then be drawn back underneath the collar into the center of that collar I'm just looking on the monitor real pretty so it, it, it almost looked like that these aren't the same they actually are the same if I look this one just happened to be dangling down and this one is more straight but um, it's a real pretty jig black jigs I love fishing black jigs and then this little bit of flash will look real good so some of this I'll have to cut out Fucking babbling so I have my vice quarter olive painted head and that's the uh, that hilts mold quarter ounce Arky style head so I switched the thread for my collar but it's still the uh, pack bay size a pack bays uh, been my go-to thread um, still use a lot of good rod and Fuji any good quality nylon rod wrapping thread some good color good color fastness um, is all is all you need for uh, bucktail so all right we'll set the black aside start with my pinch for this one I'll do a 50 50 pinch and we'll see how it compares to that black jig we just did Restack by hand just to retain some of that natural look and removing some of those hairs we just don't like the way they look. All right. So I'm just measuring this length of the body past the bend of the hook which is just past and onto this black part of my vise. Happy with that. I'm going to unlock my vise. I'm going to rotate it so I can see the bottom, or in this case, the top of the jig itself. Trim my pinch. Place that as gingerly as I can because I'm stabbing myself in the thumb. So I secured that with a couple tighter wraps. Again, just walking towards the bend of the hook and then a couple wraps back towards the head. A little bit tighter because I didn't really have a good uh, angle to put those on. And again, I'm just pushing directly towards the center of the hook shank, pressing those hairs straight down. and they've naturally just walked around. The collar of this jig. So that's at the 12 o'clock and that's at the six o'clock. So now I rotate my vise so I can see this side. I try to keep the pinch is fairly equal. You don't want the hairs to be lopsided on one side or the other. So if you have any questions on what we're doing, go ahead and put those down below in the comment section. You know, this is a very plain jig and like I said, there'll be at least probably two other videos where we tie with some of those other heads and do a little bit more advanced or detailed techniques as we dress these jigs um, but these are primarily specifically for bass fishing I'm really hoping that uh, Todd um, enjoys these I'm just doing up a big selection a couple different I used as many molds as I had um, to try to get a good uh, selection of not only weights but head shapes and sizes so just trying to tie up something that he'd be impressed with.
place this pinch down. A couple tight wraps towards the bend of the hook. A couple tight wraps back towards the head. And you can see that they're not touching yet. So I can press straight down towards the very center of this hook shank. Keep in mind we did not lock this thread on with any sort of half hitch or whip finish. Um, so if you're rotating your vise, you can go you can go one full rotation, but then you have to go one full rotation back. If you keep spinning it one way or the other, you're either adding extra wraps or you're loosening the wraps you've already put on. So everything that's in place. I'm happy with the shape of that and the way everything's laying. So we'll start. On this side, I just rotated the vise so I can look at this side of the jig. Flashaboo is a little bit easier to pick out exactly four fibers. I got four and I lick them just like I was going to thread a needle just to line them up so I can trim the end square. Lay these right down the lateral line so I can lock this on. That was three wraps towards the bend of the hook, a couple wraps back. Keep a hold of that flashaboo so I can pull it taut, just so I can snip it just under the length of the bucktail, just a, just a hair shorter. But rotate the vise to the other side so I can see this side. And again, I'm gonna take four strands of this red flashaboo. With them just like I was going to thread a needle. I trim those ends to square them up. Again laying this right down the lateral line. And I stopped at my third wrap back towards the bend of the hook just so I can trim that and then I will continue my couple wraps back to the head before I do anything else, just to make sure that that's locked on. So far, so good. At this point, I can finish my wraps. Walk my wraps up to the head of the jig. Walk back towards the center and then back towards the head of the jig, just to give it a nice shape. Make sure that the thread is aligned, looks pretty. Take a loop of another color of size A thread to put underneath my last wrap. Walk back towards the center of the collar and then back to the head. Again, just making that collar pretty. You could whip finish by hand. You could use a whip finish tool. Heads this size, a whip finish tool. You have to stay aware of where that hook eye is so you don't catch yourself as you rotate that whip finish tool on the eye of the hook. nice jig. So I'm tying this one with a natural brown. This tail, the hair is long enough, though it does tend to feel somewhat hollow. You know, this pinch is compressing the fibers a lot. So I, I keep that in mind as I tie this jig.
these wraps were fairly light. As, I, as you can see, the, the fibers of this hair is compressed an awful lot. There is a very sharp V here, and I did not put a lot of pressure on that, those threads. Some guys don't like tying with hair that isn't perfect. Thicker hair like this, you know, they, they would usually ignore or use for um, only specific purposes. As a production tire, you kind of have to get used to less than perfect tails and um, using your skill at building the jig to compensate for that, to, to make your jigs a, a good quality jig that matched the one that you just tied, that matches the one that you tied a week ago, that matches the one that you tied a year ago, regardless of the tail that you're taking it from. So if I'm tying just one or two jigs, I have the luxury of going through my stack, finding the tail with that perfect hair. In this case, perfect example of, it's not terrible, it's a really good color. The overall texture of this hair and the way it lays is not bad. But as you can see, as I lock the hair onto the jig, um, there, there's some hollowness to it. And again, I can feel it when I when I make this pinch. I can feel the hairs compress. When I cut them with my scissors, I can tell it it's more of a a hollow type hair. It's not hollow in the sense that it's a tube. Um, more spongy, I guess, would be a good description. So the hair fiber itself is hollow, but it compresses, similar to a sponge, I guess. So Again, just pressing directly into the center, towards the center of the hook shank. And those hairs will roll. If you need a little bit more coaxing, you can press into the center and just roll slightly. I'm not trying to spin it around the hook. I just want to compress that pile and let it let let all those logs fall into place. So I'm happy with that. This is an interesting natural color. Um, as I'm looking at it now, it uh, tends to be slightly gray towards the bottom, which is a color I really like. Um, whether I'm fly fishing or tying jigs there's something about that dun or gray color in a lure that uh, I, I think just looks fantastic I feel very confident fishing so again I got uh, five of these fibers four or five would be perfect try not to overdo it I just want a little bit of flash on the sides Lock this on right down the lateral line. And in the light here, that actually has a little bit of a green shimmer. Green working its way into blue and purple. That's neat. Green, yellow, depending on how the light's hitting it. This flash might be one of my new favorites. I don't know. We'll see. I'll tie up a few extra of these for myself and fish with them. So again, I have a pinch of five strands. I wet like I'm going to thread a needle. Screw up the butt ends so I can lay this right down that center line. And that pinch was just the right size. I don't have to trim that at all. So I rotate my jig back up so I can grab it. This collar took 
a little bit extra number of wraps just to get a good shape partially due to that the butt ends compressing I knew they were would compress as as I uh, went to finish that collar I salvage it so it looks okay try to get a good shape I think that looks all right So here we have those two jigs. I gave them a little bit of time to dry. What do you think? The olive with the red or that black with that crinkle flash? They both look sharp. So like I mentioned, this is going to be, um, these are jigs that I'm going to send to Todd at uh, Bassing 101. I think it's Bassin 101. I don't want to say it wrong. I'll definitely have links his channel down below. Uh, go ahead, check him out. Real interesting. Some of the things that he uh, goes over uh, touches on a lot of old school stuff. Uh, he's really knowledgeable, and uh, but also talks about some of the newer things as well. Just to remind everybody, go ahead. If you enjoyed what we did here today, add some comments down below like and subscribe so you don't miss any new content so i continue doing the live casts no set time yet but um, when i've been sitting here for any length of time i'll hit the power button and just let let the cameras roll uh, i really enjoy it and i've been getting a lot of good feedback so i got to pay a little bit more attention um, watching the monitor while i tie uh, just so i can uh, see some of the comments as they come uh, like I've said before, you know, I'm, I'm flying this plane while I'm building it. I'm kind of managing everything uh, on my own. So I hope uh, everyone enjoyed what we did here today. This will be another couple part series. I will, uh, like I said, we're going to get into some of these larger heads and uh, doing a little bit more detail work. Um, making some hair jigs for bass. Some of those will be very old schooly kind of like uh, what I did um, on one of my previous videos with a, you know just an old school bucktail for bass and then there'll be a few that we're gonna do with some a little bit more modern materials still using those old techniques of using natural material but um, tying them in a way uh, that's a little bit modern and different so you can keep an eye out for those videos and until next time guys tight lines <laughs>